Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're taking a look today at the Acer TC780 and on the surface this looks like a generic boxed PC. In fact, it kind of is. It's $399 as you see it here, but I was actually pretty impressed with what they managed to get inside this box for the money as well as some of the upgrade options you might have with it. We're going to explore its performance and its upgradability here in just a second, but I do want to mention in the interest of full disclosure, this came in free of charge through Amazon's Vine program. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review and no one is reviewing this content before it is posted. So let's get into the hardware first. Now this is powered by an i5-6400 quad-core processor. That's not something I usually see on a $400 PC, which was really nice to see on this one. So you've got a pretty decent engine driving the machine here. Eight gigabytes of RAM, it's DDR4 RAM. Uh, for the techies out there, it is configured in a single channel initially, but you can add in another module and go to dual channel and you'll see what are the effects of going to dual channel uh, when we look at Rocket League in a little bit. So uh, you have some upgradability there. Two terabyte hard drive. You've got a DVD burner up here as well. Uh, this is just a spacer that's empty, but you could slide in uh, another internal hard drive behind it there if you wish. On the front here, you've got two USB 3.0 ports, your audio connectors. So you have a, a microphone port and a headphone jack as well as a card reader. On the back here, it's just kind of like your standard generic PC, but you've got a bunch of ports anyhow. Uh, three USB uh, 2.0, actually four USB 2.0 ports over here, HDMI out, VGA, uh, gigabit Ethernet, another USB 3.0 port there, more audio jacks, and uh, some expandability options. And what I want to do now is actually uh, pop the hood on this and show you some of those upgradable options because uh, you can actually get into this thing as a starting point and then add more to it later. All right, so with that side panel out of the way, we can take a look at what's inside. So your CPU is right here. It is socketed, so you can pull it out and put in a different CPU if you want. Although an i5 quad core, I think, is a pretty good pairing for a system you would build into something like this case. Uh, you get a 300 watt power supply here. You'll also notice down here that you've got a full PCI X16 slot so you could plug in a GPU. Now you got to be careful. You can't go out and buy, you know, the big uh, huge gaming CPU with all the copper heat sinks hanging off of it because it won't fit in here. But they do make mini GPUs that do fit in this, in this form factor here that uh, will deliver decent 1080p performance. But you want to look for one that can be powered by this slot because the power supply does not have a connector for the GPU. I looked through all these uh, plugs here that are uh, hanging off the power supply. There are some extra plugs for adding additional hard drives, but not a GPU. Uh, but as I said, there are some mini GPUs out there. I'm sure some of you can chime in in the comment section below on what some of those good choices might be. But I did see a couple of uh, recent uh, NVIDIA uh, releases that will actually work in this slot on this computer that might be uh, worth a look. You also have a standard PCI Express slot there. Uh, this little card here is your Bluetooth and wireless card, so it supports AC wireless as well as Bluetooth 4.0. That's built into the box here as well. And you'll see here we've got a single RAM chip installed, so 8 gigabytes on uh, one of these chips. I would have liked to have seen uh, two 4 gig RAM chips in here because that would give you a dual channel configuration. Computers run faster, uh, especially with DDR4 RAM, when you install them in pairs versus just having a single one here. So gaming performance in particular will be impacted by this single chip. You'll see an impact of that when we look at Rocket League in a little bit. Uh, but you can always, of course, just buy a matching eight gigabyte stick, bring it up to 16 gigs of RAM, and you'll see a little better performance out of this machine than you would out of the box. But for a lot of word processing tasks and web browsing and that sort of thing, it may not be all that noticeable to the user, uh, but you will certainly see that if you want to get into gaming with this, especially if you add in a GPU. But overall, I'm very happy to see some expandability on a $400 PC. So I'm gonna put this thing back together, gonna boot it up, and we're gonna see how it performs. All right, so here we are on the Windows desktop. We're running a 1080p 60 video file from YouTube right now. Everything seems to be working just fine. I can move the windows around, not lose any frames here, and things seem to be playing back quite well. I think you won't have any problem playing back Netflix or doing anything else. And uh, because you've got a quad-core processor in here, you can have these videos playing in the background, even at higher resolutions and frame rates, yet still be able to do some other work on here at the same time. That's one of the things that more cores gets you. I will take a look here also at a a uh, Word document that we're editing at the same time here. This is one with a very involved newsletter template here. You can see I'm moving text around. Uh, the video is playing back just fine. We're not losing any frames. And again, 
and the combination of the quad core processor and the eight gigs of RAM uh, really do make a difference on here. I also got a very good score on the Octane benchmark test, 33,824. And that's a test that we run in Google Chrome to see how well it can do all the things that you would typically do on the web. Now we look at a lot of laptops on the channel, uh, not too many desktops, but it really does perform very, very well. And this really brings back the argument we've been having on this channel uh, quite a bit, which is uh, you can buy a very high performing computer for a low price like we're seeing here. Uh, but the more expensive computers add additional features, better build quality, faster graphics processes for gaming and that kind of thing. So that really is uh, the breaking point here. Uh, you can really get a fast computer for a low price if you're doing uh, the sorts of things we just looked at here. But let's now push it a little further and take a look at some gaming. All right, so we're going to start off with Minecraft here, and you can see we're getting frame rates around anywhere from 70 to 90 sometimes frames per second. I am running the Optifine Performance Enhancing Plugin, which gives us a little bit better performance on this. You might see some clipping in the recording because I recorded only 30 frames per second, so we're pushing out uh, more frames than my recorder can keep up with at this point. But this is good performance. You would get better performance if you had a GPU connected to it, a separate graphics processor. But I think for Minecraft on a 1080p display like this one, I think this is good performance and certainly more than adequate. All right, so here we are playing Counter-Strike Go. You can see the settings that I have put together here. We went down to 720p and I turned a lot of stuff down. So we're getting around 30 frames per second, uh, which isn't bad considering we don't have a GPU on this device, but you could of course do better with a gaming PC, but this is a good starting point. And I think if you did have a GPU on board or maybe uh, turn down the re resolution and some of the additional display settings, you might be able to inch that uh, frame rate a little higher, but uh, not bad for what we're getting here for the price. And I was very very surprised to see how well Rocket League runs on this out of the box. Now you do have to turn some settings down as I did here. So again, we're at 720p. I turned off all these effects and everything. But as you'll see here, when I clear out of the menu, uh, it actually runs well above 30 frames per second. It might be hard to see the frame counter in the upper left hand corner, but I'm doing about 35 to 40 frames per second now as I'm uh, playing this game very horribly here. So uh, not bad of an experience here out of the box. Now you'll remember at the beginning of the video, I mentioned how it only has one RAM stick and how maybe having a second one uh, might give you better performance. So what I did on the computer here was I pulled out the eight gigabyte stick that it came with, uh, shutting it down of course, and I put in two eight gigabyte sticks that I had laying around here for a different project. And I booted the computer back up, went back into Rocket League, and I got frame rates at close to 60 frames per second. So we saw a very dramatic performance increase on Rocket League here with those same settings. So still not as good as what you would get on a normal GPU, but uh, very good for uh, Intel graphics which are built into the processor. So those built-in Intel graphics like fast memory and they like multi-channel memory. So having both of those RAM sticks uh, in, installed on the computer will actually give you a better gaming performance. But I do recommend uh, putting in a GPU if you really do intend to use this for a gaming device. Now I did try to run the 3 Mark CloudGate test like I do on all of my uh, mid-range and low-end computers. And unfortunately, I couldn't get it to run as you can see here with a big fat zero on there. I have tried everything. I spent hours hours trying to get this work down, even went through all the support documentation, nada. So uh, you can at least see how well it does with games in the real world, but we unfortunately won't have a score to compare it against other machines we have tested. And I think this one might actually do well as a home theater box. So I got Cody loaded up here. We're going to look at our HEVC file that we like to stress test our machines with. Uh, this is a 4K file that has a lot of motion to it, and it's able to keep up with that uh, fairly well. Uh, I also did our Blu-ray MKV test on it as well and that uh, runs just fine about where I would expect it to be. Uh, what I didn't anticipate though was that it supports DTS HD and Dolby True HD audio with my home theater receiver. It also switches down properly to 24p when you're playing back a Blu-ray MKV like this one as well. So I think as a home theater box it might actually do pretty well and the fans aren't that loud on it either. So that is the Acer TC780 and this proves once again that you can buy a pretty powerful computer for a relatively low price. $399 bucks for a, a quad core i5 Skylake chip and eight gigs of RAM, I think is a pretty good deal. And you saw uh, how nicely it performed, especially with web browsing and word processing and a lot of the casual tasks that I think uh, this computer is being aimed at. But you got some upgradability under there also. So you could put in one of those slot powered uh, GPUs, the mini GPU and add another eight gigs of RAM 
into the empty RAM slot there and get a, a somewhat passable gaming device, I think, that uh, you could probably get configured for under $650. Now, I know you could probably go out and build one yourself and maybe get in around that price point, but if you're a little weary of doing that and just want a starting point that uh, is more than a bare bones kit, this is actually a pretty good way to get started. Uh, you are going to get, though, a pretty crappy keyboard in the box here. It feels like you could break it in half, so not a great keyboard. Uh, the optical mouse here is pretty generic but passable, and again, you don't get the prettiest aesthetics or the nicest keyboards for 400 bucks, but it's nice to see that you can get uh, some decent computing horsepower. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by my Patreon supporters, including Gold Level supporter Eric. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.